So I'm taking a break from being a parasite and feeding off the works of others to do my own reaction video. I think I found one nobody else has done yet. It's a new feminist on the block by the name of Emily Rose. Fresh meat. Finger the She's got that soft, trembling voice of a feminist that I love Ooh, so much. That fighting for women's rights has too often become synonymous with man-hating. So, with that said, let's get going with 50 Reasons I'm a Feminist. I am a feminist because... Because being a feminist acknowledges there's a problem. There is... Let me guess. The problem is you have shitty camera work? There is inequality between women and men, and feminism acknowledges this. Yes. There is an inequality between women and men. <music> women have it much easier than men. Because sexism in the workplace is still a very real thing. Oh yeah. I've been attacked by my female supervisor. But before you give me some bullshit about how, as a man, I must have started it, I got the crap beat out of me for over a decade, and at one point I had my face dislodged with an aluminum baseball bat, just because of who I am. They had to sew my face back on. Have you ever had a face reattached? It's not fun. But let me assure you, because of my experiences, I'm a pacifist. I will incapacitate people but I refuse to cause any physical injury. So, take a guess who got suspended. Go on, guess. Because women's sports teams don't get nearly enough coverage or funding as men's sports teams. See, right here. This is proof you have no idea how sports work. Sports is a business. As a business, you have to make money in order to get paid more money. You have to be interesting and get butts in those seats and sell some tickets. Coverage does not put butts in the seats. So, what is feminism going to do? Is feminism going to make women better at sports? Because that is what will get butts in those seats. By the way, 53% of the world is female. Go buy some tickets and sit in those seats. When that happens, they'll have the ability to negotiate for more money. Wait, you don't want to sit out in the freezing cold watching a football game of just women? You say the ladies' football league refused to play outdoors. See, that's part of the fun, watching two teams suffer in agony and still slug it out trying to murder each other. It ain't fun to watch women in bikinis and helmets fall over each other. Gasser, a very smart runner. Take the gift, now it is Gasser. Let's be honest, this is a cringe fest. Pure cringe. Because female politicians, artists, and sports stars are still asked about their children when men are never asked about their children. I get asked if I have children all the time. Citation needed. Because you're being a girl is an insult. Yeah, and toxic masculinity is an insult as well. I see toxic masculinity tossed around much more than you're a girl. Regardless, insults exist. Is feminists going to get rid of all hatred in the world? Because women still aren't allowed to be on the front line in the military. Okay, you put this out on July 13th of 2016. On December 3rd of 2015, that would be several months before, the Pentagon opened up all frontline positions to women in the military. Now, when I did a Google search for women serving in the front lines of the military, that was the very first hit. So, how about from now on, before you make any statements or questions, maybe you want to take a minute and, oh, I don't know, Google your statement or question and see what the first hit that comes up is, okay? Because women with children or about to have children are less likely to be hired than men with children or about to be a dad. Citation needed. 
because I can tell you that in certain fields, a woman could show up at the job interview with a baby dangling out of her vagina and have enough holes in her arm from shooting up heroin to technically make that limb a flute, and she'd still get hired. I am totally serious here. Apply to New York State working at a mental hospital as support staff. You will be hired. I also bet you'll be dead in about three months because you look small and easily thrown downstairs. Take a guess why we're always hiring. Because there are still girls jobs and boys jobs. Really? Because I don't know of a single law defining girls jobs or boys job. In fact, that's the problem at my job. We have a quota of girls jobs to fill. The women keep getting their spines broken somehow. However, because of feminism, we can't declare my job a boys job and only hire men. No, no, we've got to hire these girls who are 18 years old, weigh about 60 pounds soaking wet because of affirmative action. People are getting killed because of this political correctness crap. Because in some places, child marriage is a norm. Finally, an actual problem that needs to be solved. Now, you know boys get forced into marriage as well, right? So this is really a children's right issue, not a feminism issue. Because women and men should have equal access to their children. I agree. Unfortunately, feminists don't want to give up that child support. So they don't give up the children. So bully for you for bringing up a man's issue. But understand, you just made yourself an enemy of every feminist on the planet. Remember, women make $10.5 billion in child support slash alimony every year, and men only get about $1.2 billion. If you start pushing this equal access to children thing, you're going to be cutting into the meal ticket of a whole lot of women. Are you ready to take away $4.6 billion or so away from women and give it back to men every year? If you actually made any headway on this issue, you'd be lynched. Because suicide is one of the leading causes of death in young men. I used to work on a suicide prevention hotline. I can make a three hour long video about it. I'm just going to tell you right now, until you go work for an SPH and you work there at least one day a week for, I'm going to say a month. Shut up. This is a forbidden topic to you until you spend at least 16 hours on the line. So go there, volunteer, then in a month we'll talk. I might seem harsh. It's nice to see you're bringing it up. However, later in the video, you demonstrate to me you shouldn't be talking about this. Because gendered online harassment is on the rise. Yes, men are harassed online more than women, and it is increasing. Statistical fact. Because the Catholic Church don't allow women to have leadership positions. One, there is no God save the eldritch God. Two, if some fools want to believe in that Catholic God, then they should be allowed to worship any way they wish. I don't have to believe in their silly God to know that if I make people worship the way I want to, then they can make people worship me the way they want to. That's not good for anyone. Like it or not, worshiping a God is a form of free speech, and you shouldn't impose your morality on them. Either sacrifice them on an altar in worship of me, or let it go. Because some workplaces require women to wear heels. Some workplaces require people to wear hard hats. Some places require people to not wear heels. I wish they did that at my job. If you don't like the money, don't take the money. Most of those jobs are about image. If you want people to think something is good, you put a beautiful woman next to it. You don't put some... Hippopotamic landmass! Next to it. Would you buy a car with Fezzik standing next to it? Hmm. Well, okay, maybe I would. Because France recently banned the burqa, they did this to empower more women. I can't think of anything less empowering than telling women what they can and cannot wear. Alright. You finally touched on a feminist issue that exists. I would agree with you. However, I also want to point out that we have the right for members of the KKK to cover their face at clan rallies. Oh wait! No! No, we don't. Clan members cannot cover their face at clan rallies. So, if you allow women to wear burqas, why do we ban men from wearing full clan outfits? You can't have it both ways. Do we allow women to wear burqas and clansmen to wear hoods and masks? What value would that say that we had as a society? Do we favor freedom to choose what to wear 
or the need for society to know the identities of its members so they do not act with the power of anonymity. I agree with you in principle, but I also agree in the rule of law. Society has chosen that it values accountability over freedom of expression. Maybe someday society will become civilized enough we will not need these rules. Because of the marketing of toys, girls are taught to be princesses and mothers, and boys are taught to be imaginative. They dress up as firemen and as doctors, and we are teaching our girls such a bad message. Actually, studies show that the preference is inherent to genders. Doctors and firemen have to put aside their feelings and emotions and do very difficult things. Lives depend on them. We teach boys not to cry, not because it's bad to cry, but because we beat into boys, other people come first. That's why boys are doctors and firemen, because you want someone strong to pull you out of a fire. Do you think you could carry a six foot one, 220 pound man out of a burning building? Because that would be me. We had a client die. The women around me freaked out. I leaped on him and restarted his heart with my bare hands. A building next to our worksite caught on fire at around 2 a.m. I grabbed a fire extinguisher and ran over. I couldn't do anything to save anyone, but I was the only man on the worksite, and I am the only one who took action. Now, I'm sorry, but as a man, we are expected to do the hard jobs without hesitation. Crying is bad, not for men, but for the lives that depend on us. I don't get to cry until after the crisis. I restarted a heart. I run towards what others run from. Seconds count. You don't get to cry. People die if you cry. If you want to risk your life for others, if you want to stand over someone with your arms wrist deep in their guts, while you try to get their internal organs to work, bully for you. No one is stopping you. But women don't want to do that job. Not because society says so, but because society values women's lives over men. Men are expendable, women are not. Hell, nature values women over men. At birth, there are more boys than girls, but by puberty, that's reversed. That's why we get 53% women, 47% men. Mother Nature knows we're expendable. She kills us to get rid of the weak ones. We get the hard jobs where we could die. You get the safe jobs where you live. 7% of workplace deaths are women. I don't hear feminists clamoring to even out that particular statistic. Nor do I think that we should. Some men's rights activists might hate me for saying this, but it's been working for a few eons now. Why rock the boat? Men and women should have different rights. We need equal opportunities so that the far end of the bell curve doesn't have to be forced to conform to those of us within one standard deviation of the mean. That said, there's a reason stereotypes exist. Sometime I need to do a video on why that is. It's far too long of a topic to go into in this video. Listen, you are not a fireman because that is what turned out to be the best choice overall. Usually, you aren't a fireman because you are valued more than a man. Women and children first. It's not children first, it's women, then children. Because patriarchy? No. It's women first, then children, then men. Because that's what works. We need women to be treated special. So when men ask them to get on the boat before the children, before the men, it's because we need them to be able to take care of the children. We need them to arrive first and protect the children that are coming next. We need someone to catch the children when we throw them to you. We need you to think that you are special because of survivor skills. You are going to be tearing your heart out when we die crossing that river eaten by alligators right in front of your eyes. You need to think you're special so you don't run in after us and you protect the children. Men need to not cry because we need to accept that we're going to send our wives across the river. We're going to toss our children after them, then pick up a sharp stick, and we're going to cross that river and stab the hell out of whatever tries to eat us. If we make it to the other side, we can't break down and say, Holy crap, I was so scared. 
because we still have to make sure that this side of the river is safe and you need to take care of the kids. You can't do that if you don't trust us. Let's be honest, would you ever trust a crying man at a difficult job? This is a simple conservation of resources. In the past, other scenarios were tried and the other ones all failed. Nature loves the easy solution. She loves conservation of energy. The women who went last got eaten by alligators, which means no milk for the babies, which means the babies die. Those male-female pairings didn't survive crossing the river. Those humans aren't your ancestors. Look, I'm going to try to make this simple. Are you thinking right now? You think, therefore you exist. Now, I might not exist. The rest of the universe might not exist. That is a sophistic belief. To doubt everything. But you can't doubt that you're thinking. If you accept this, then there is an objective reality on some level. On some level, reality exists. That means there are limits to your subjective reality. Yes, many things are social constructs, but many things aren't. Social constructs are interpretations of the limitations of reality. You may want a world where men and women are interchangeable, but Mother Nature doesn't. Mother Nature wins. We have really only had 50 years with the ability to actually change what Mother Nature wants. She's had billions. We may, someday, have your perfect world, but it won't be today. It won't be in our lifetimes, and I'm not even sure we should have your perfect world. I don't like my lot in life. Within objective reality, I do have a great deal of subjective choice. But there's always comes a point where objective reality will kick me in the balls and make me accept things the way they are. I don't like it one bit, but I accept that this is objective reality of being male. So why can't you accept the reality of being female? Because of women in politics. How can we have a representative parliament when we don't have half our politicians being women? 53% of the population is female. Hold your nose and vote vagina. You know, those men in power, the ones you have a problem with, you put them there. Women even vote more than men. Not by percentages of that there's more of you, but you simply vote more often. You know why? You have more free time. Men got shit to do. Because of women's magazines. Women's magazines focus on how women can please men and how we can lose weight. This is seriously insulting and patronizing. Do you ever actually read those magazines? Because I do, and they share the skit out of me. It's full of feminism buzzwords. They are run by women. The editors are all feminists. Why do you complain about magazines feminists create? Oh, wait, maybe feminists don't actually care about women. Maybe they only care about pushing their own personal agenda. Maybe they're all about virtue signaling and not about solving problems. Maybe the feminist war on shame is finally coming back around to bite you in the ass. Just a thought. Because of body image. Why are women constantly told what size they should be? Fat women constantly play goofy, funny roles in films. Skinny women are constantly hated and are the target of abuse. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, Anti-fat shaming, anti-slut shaming. I I'm sorry, but feminism has successfully destroyed the concept of shame. Why do you think nothing works on Donald Trump? For 50 years, for three generations, you have told everyone that everyone is good, everyone is equal, everyone is interchangeable. Then Trump comes along and acts like an ass. You try to shame him. Yet, you have killed the concept of shame. So how can you use shame when everything is permitted? You are victims of your own success. No women should be subjected to abuse because of their body. Even comments on women's bodies shouldn't be appropriate. Okay, personally, insulting somebody is bad form. However, comments should be banned. Guess what? In colleges where yes means yes, the mere act of talking to a woman, if the woman wants to press charges, is sexual harassment. In Nottinghamshire, UK, the act of talking to a woman, even saying hi, is defined under the law as a hate crime. If a man in Nottinghamshire contacts a woman in the other side of the planet, and that woman calls Nottinghamshire PD and reports him, it's a hate crime. Even if all he did was say, excuse me, I can't figure out how to use my computer, I need IT help. Now, of course, it's up to the law's discretion to pursue a charge or not, but you and I both know the first time the cops don't arrest somebody, the feminists will set fire to the Nottinghamshire police station. What you are talking about is censorship. We already have laws to cover harassment. Just use them. 
because black women are told they're only pretty if they're light-skinned black women. First, is citation needed? Two, if it exists, that's not a female-only problem. I imagine black men are told the same thing. So, that's a black problem, if it exists, not a feminist issue. Because women in Saudi Arabia aren't allowed to go to football games, go to cemeteries, go swimming, or try on clothes when they're shopping. I agree. Now go to Saudi Arabia and do something about it. Because of celebrities without makeup. Is anyone else infuriated about all these blog posts about celebrities without makeup? Wait. <laughs> wait, wait. You talk about unfair body image. Then, when people try to dispel body image myths, you complain that people are trying to expose what people really look like, so people have realistic self-body images. What the fuck? Seriously, what the fuck? Christ fucking, what the hell? Fuck, fuck, fuckity, fuck, fuck, fuck me sideways up the ass with a fucking chainsaw. Not a normal chainsaw, a chainsaw designed specifically for fucking, for fucking... Because women are still asked what they were wearing, how much they had drank, and if they had been flirting. Citation needed. You know, I'm done with this listen and believe crap. So many others have done such better videos debunking rape myths. Go watch them. This is a Pratt. A point refuted a thousand times. P-R-A-T-T. -T. Google it. Because women can't be sexual like men. You are right. Men can't get laid just by walking into a bar and shouting, I am so drunk. Women are constantly sexualized and objectified, but if we ever talk about sex and the fact that we enjoy sex, then it's too much information and we are seen as sluts. Constantly. All women everywhere are constantly sexualized and objectified. Constantly. Constantly, just non-stop. It's just relentless. We have we have entire committees of men just thinking of new ways to objectify you. We, you no wonder ninety-three million people in America are unemployed. Do you have any idea how much mind power it takes to constantly objectify every woman? Okay, I'm gonna clue you in on something. Uh, men and women spend a lot less time having sex than doing everything else. Men's sexual desires actually do decline with age. They do, trust me. Hit about 40 and we just don't really care about it anymore. The only reason we have sex is because you guys want to feel like loved, okay? Seriously. We, I mean, we keep up appearances, we like to rub the occasional one out, but really for the most part, most men about 40 simply don't care about sex as much as you think we do. Seriously. And you know why? Women are boring in bed. Sorry, but you are. You, we have to do all the work. You do very little. You lie there and you go, mm, uh, and you expect us to be happy when we have to spend an entire hour getting you to come just so we can have one minute of joy. That's like a really bad deal. Porn is just so much more satisfying. Once your hormones start to ebb, we just don't care anymore. The truth is, women are the ones creating sexual objectification. You write the women's magazines. You write how to get a man when most men after 30 really just want to find somebody who is fun to spend time with. Guess what? Sluts are boring. Sluts are high maintenance. So tell me, when was the last time you did something romantic for a man that he wanted and it didn't involve sex? Well, there's the usual things. Flowers, chocolates, promises you don't intend to keep. Okay, now tell me, what do you do for your man? And if it begins or ends with sex, it doesn't count. Because I'm telling you, right now, after 30, sex isn't nearly as important as you think it is. So here's the lowdown. We aren't sexualizing women all the time, constantly. What is happening is, you wish we were. You wish men were slaves to you. You wish that we were all little dogs running around, a slave to your feminine wiles. Well... You can take your wiles and this $5 bill and you can go buy yourself some Starbucks. Because our bodies are illegal. What? What? Because women's bodies are illegal. You need to be a feminist because women's bodies are illegal. A woman's body is illegal. It's just illegal. There are laws banning women's bodies. A woman is not allowed to have a body. Apparently, 
Women have to exist as formless blobs of pure thought that just drift about because it's illegal for them to have corporeal form. And in your case, you must be a very, 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 very small formless blob of thought. Why is it against the law for women to show their nipples and it's not against the law for men? The only possible reason that we would have to get our nipples out is to feed babies. Men don't feed babies. Okay. You see, it used to be that sluts were shame. They aren't anymore. So, 20-year-old sluts are sleeping with rich 30-year-old men who did nothing since their 20s except get an education and make money. Then, the sluts get older and they want to find a husband. But when they hit 30, they discover the 20-year-olds are banging all the best husband material. Shaming nipples, shaming sluts, shaming sleeping with older men or younger women. That was all about uh, creating this uh, barrier that made sure that 30-year-old women had a chance to find a good husband. Shaming women, showing off their nipples, was part of keeping the supply of husbands intact but making sure younger women towed the line. Oh, and by the way, in 34 states in America, you are allowed to walk around topless as a woman. I'm just saying. Because of catcalling. Whether I want to wear a really, really tiny short skirt or I want to wear sweatpants, I shouldn't be subjected to catcalling. It isn't a compliment and it is scary. Feminist war on shame has made it so it's okay for men to catcall. Men used to shame other men for doing that. We don't anymore. Seriously, we did. We thought men who catcalled were assholes. However, I have to point it out, men catcall because it works. Women didn't respond to catcalls men wouldn't try it. So don't blame men. Get with the shaming of women into turning down those cat calls and men will stop. You control the vaginas. You control whatever behavior will and will not get those vaginas. Are you familiar with the Skinner box, doctor? Psychology is not my area of expertise. What is most interesting to me is the similarity among pigeons roaches and humans inside a skinner box a pigeon or a roach if presented with a lever which dispenses food every time it is pressed will press it when they are hungry and will not when they lack appetite Food is dispensed at random intervals. Both the pigeons and the roaches press the lever whether or not they need to, and upwards of 20,000 times for a single small server. Stop giving men the vagina when men catcall and men will stop catcalling. Because of sex trafficking, the UN predicts almost 2 million girls are victims of human trafficking. So I had to look this one up. It's actually 4.5 million in sex trafficking. Only 66% are women. So 3 million females worldwide and 1.5 million males worldwide. Mostly young boys. Did you know that in the Congo, men get raped at about the same rate as women? Except at the end of a male-on-male -male rape, the man is killed. Women get released after the rape. So men get raped and killed. Women just get raped. Because... The patriarchy? Because of page three, boobs are not news. I agree. Boobs are not news. Because of the normalization of self-hatred, women constantly bond over their hatred of their bodies and their faces. Don't forget how feminists bond over the hatred of men. You also have a wang. And do you think boys don't hate their bodies? Why do you think so many try to commit suicide. This is why I have revoked your suicide discussion card. You complain about exposing celebrities for what they really look like, then complain about body shaming. Uh, no, 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 I'm good. I'm, I'm over it. I'm, I'm not, I'm not raging. You, you can put that away. I'm just, I'm just a little miffed. Okay, look, look. Seriously, stop talking about things without actually getting out there, putting boots on the ground, and doing something about it. YouTube videos are great. I volunteer at Meals on Wheels, the local food pantry as well. When I have the time, I used to work at the uh, SPH, but unfortunately, I'm working 70 hours a week now. I like to rescue and nurse back to health dying orphan kittens. 
Ever bottle feed a kitten every 30 minutes for three days straight without sleep? I have. I love doing the impossible things. I love saving the lives of animals over people who's told me, hey, that cat's going to die. I love defying death. And every time I save a life, I laugh and say, not today, death. And when death wins anyways, I always look into the eye of every animal I have ever had to put to sleep. As they die. Because they deserve that much. Do you know how many owners don't even have the courage to be there at the end? They just hand them over to the vet and say, I don't want to know what happens. Fucking cowards! If you choose to kill an animal, you would damn well better stand there and watch. Yeah, it tears your heart out. Tears mine out too. But you owe it to them. 11. I have lost 11 cats over the years. Some kittens. Some made it to 25. I do what I can because it's what I'm good at. I have that healing touch. If you have a gift, you use it. Yes, I make sarcastic videos on YouTube. I also get out there and do something. I work with the mentally and physically disabled. I work with people getting out of mental hospitals. I help people put their lives back together. So what do you do to make the world better? How much time per week do you spend making someone else's life better? Because women are expected to be maternal. Not all women want to have babies and that's okay. It doesn't mean they're selfish. Yes, it does mean you are selfish. Hundreds of generations of people have lived and died to give you your cushy life. If you don't reproduce, you are being selfish because you aren't doing anything to pay it forward. Now me, that's not an option. And that's okay. Some people can't have children, but if you choose not to have babies, don't lie and say it's not selfish. Nothing wrong with the choice, but don't be dishonest about it. Because a man's masculinity shouldn't be defined by what they wear, their sexuality, or what job they're in. It isn't. St. Darwin, how do I explain this? I know, I'm going to enlist the help of Bane666 and Harmful Opinion. Look, women are born with inherent value. You are a human being. I am not born with inherent value. I'm a human doing. A woman born can be a vegetable and lie there and do nothing her whole life. A man can screw you. You can incubate a spawn. You could be used to suckle young. If I feed you and wipe your ass, keep you clean and roll you around, you still have value, if for no other reason than as a baby-making machine. Sorry if that offends you, but it's the truth. However, as a man, what good am I? You could kill 90% of the men on this planet and while those men would be exhausted and you would have to institute some serious controls on who gets to marry whom for the next half dozen generations, you know, to prevent inbreeding, you could get the population of Earth back up to pre-male apocalypse in just a single generation. Now reverse that. Let's have a female apocalypse. It would take every woman having four babies each 3.93 generations to get back to where we were before pre-female apocalypse. That's 20 years versus 78.6. You have inherent value. I don't. I make value by doing things. That what makes a man a man. It's what he does. How a man defines that is up to the man. Masculinity is a very subjective thing, but trust me, a true man is not defined by society, but by his actions. While we're on the subject, I do want to clue you in on something so you understand what that above clip was about. Out of all the rites of passage on the planet, what is the one consistent thing that they all share? The ability to endure pain. Seriously, that's what they all boil down to. The rite of passage from being a boy to a man is all about the ability to endure pain. 
uh, like the ability to drink tons of neurotoxins and survive, the ability to hunt an animal, the ability to headbutt another guy and survive. Why do you think that the movie Die Hard is so popular? Welcome to the party, pal! Bruce Willis has created a cottage industry out of getting the crap beat out of him, but he keeps getting back up. He is the determinator. It's not that he's perfect or infallible. He's not wish fulfillment. It's simply that the one true defining trait for man is the ability to endure a massive amount of suffering. Why do you think men don't consider internet online harassment an issue? To online gamers who are male, it's just proof of how tough they are. The more trolls they draw, the more abuse they get, the more they survive, the better off they look to other males. We're built to take pain. Women are not. Women are trained at a young age to cry. Why? Because we want you to. We want you to let us know when there's a problem so we can come and help you. Because boys don't cry and women always cry. Women don't always cry. Men do cry. I cry. I cried every time I stared into the eyes of every cat I failed to save. When Tigger got lung cancer, I cried. When Jay got brain cancer, I cried. When Loki's kidneys gave out, I cried. I cried as I watched the light go out in their eyes and I held their paws as each one was put down because they were in agony and it was the humane thing to do. I don't cry when someone is depending on me. I don't cry when lives are at stake. I don't cry when somebody else needs to cry. I listen. I help. I worry about my feelings later when somebody else isn't depending on me. Because I don't cry when children are burning to death and screeching for their mother in a three-story apartment building that went up in flames. That doesn't mean I'm not horrified. It means I don't have the time to be horrified. I'll be horrified late at night in my nightmares where I will relive every failure I have ever had and wonder how I can do better because next time I'm not going to fail. My self-flagellation is the price I pay for being better than everyone else in a crisis. However, the reason why men usually don't cry and women usually do is because of simple physics. In an unknown volume of space, if two people get lost and neither know where they are or where the other one is, the safest method for them to find each other is for one to remain still and the other to search. This is simple statistical mathematics. So, over time, nature evolved the human species as follows. If there is a problem, the female will remain stationary and make as much noise as possible, so that the male will go looking for her. Specialization is often superior to generalization. So, that's just how it turned out. In fact, since women are inherently valuable, it's an evolutionary advantage if a female is quick to express her discomfort. Why do you think women go to the doctor more than men? Because of forced marriage. Wait, you used this one already. I guess you only have 49 reasons, eh? Because I've been told I have mental health issues because I am a young woman. Are you sure? Maybe you have mental health issues because you have mental health issues. I don't recall a single psychologist in all the decades that I have worked with psychologists, and I worked with a lot of psychologists. I have not heard one ever use the diagnosis young female. So, citation needed. Because women and men deserve equal pay for equal work. The wage gap is a myth. This is another prat. Because in the US, a woman is raped every six seconds. <laughs> really? Every six seconds, you say. So, with 365.25 days in a year, that would be 8,766 hours in a year. Five, 525, 960 minutes in a year. Ten rapes a minute. That means 5,259,600 women are raped every year. Now, according to the FBI, on average, about 5% of all rapes end in murder. Now, last year, about 1,200 women were murdered, give or take. So, for your claim, to be correct, 262,980 women would need to be raped and murdered minimum every single year. Now, the average woman lives 78.74 years. So, in your lifetime, out of 169 million women in America, four hundred and fourteen million will be raped. So every woman in America will be raped 
2.4 times, and every man is going to have to rape 2.8 women. Oh, by the by, because of that pesky 5% of all rape victims are murdered, where are the piles of raped and murdered women scattered across the United States because it's kind of hard to hide a fucking apocalypse? Because according to feminists, <laughs> we live in a rape culture. That means that this has been going on for decades. That means if you add up the total population in the United States, put this one in every six bullshit thing or on reverse exponential curve, that means that if you only go back 78.74 years, the average life expectancy of a woman, that means that there should be about 20.7 million raped and murdered women lying about somewhere right now. And every man in America knows about this, but we all just keep quiet about it because, you know, patriarchy. You know there's only 14 dead people for every person alive today, right? Christ. By claiming one woman is raped every six seconds, you are claiming that the United States of America, we have, at minimum, raped and murdered... We have raped and murdered 3.45 times the number of Jews killed in Nazi Germany. So, uh, fuck you. No wonder feminists all hate men. You think we're all fucking monsters. You honestly believe that we are all rapists and that we are, we fucking have an entire industry devoted to raping, murdering, and somehow disposing of the bodies. So that's what those 93 million unemployed people are doing. They're not really unemployed in America. They've actually got jobs as part of our rape industry. They had it coming. Go ahead. Prove me wrong. I don't care what numbers you feed in to my math. When you claim one every six seconds, you are claiming that America is the rape capital of the fucking universe and that every man should be killed in his sleep for being a total inhuman monster. Because there is no way that this has been going on for any length of time without everyone finding out. Your math is totally bogus. At this point, I'm going to say something from the depths of my soul with all sincerity. Stop doing math. You aren't good at it. Because I believe in pro-choice. I am too. 77% of anti-abortion leaders are men. After trying to convince me every woman in America will be raped 2.4 times in their lifetime, I don't believe any statistics you spout. Citation needed. They don't have a uterus and they don't have an opinion. Wow, you really are a feminist. Men don't have opinions. I got it. Well, why don't I give you my two cents anyways? Sociologically, abortion is bad. It is murder. Let's not beat around the bush. You are murdering children, or at least proto-humans. Now that said, I do see the need for abortion. I've had one child in my lifetime. It died in the womb. I don't want to get into the details, but the fault lies in me. Any baby I conceive has about a 75% chance of survival. There is an undetermined percentage chance that as the baby dies, it will turn into full-blown cancer and threaten the life of the host, which it did. So. Are you willing to put a bullet in a chamber, spin the barrel, then stuff that barrel up your vagina and pull the trigger? Because statistically, it's the same damn thing as having my baby. We should allow abortion. We should also strive to create a society where abortion is considered a last resort. We should make a world where people welcome the thought of a baby and are not filled with dread at the concept. Feminists poison women's mind to tell them, you can have that baby later. The baby will only get in the way. And you can always have another. No, you can't. And babies are always in the way. It doesn't matter when you have them. That's part of the process. That's part of paying it forward. Your parents worked hard for you. Thousands of generations worked hard to make this easy life you have. I myself am taking myself out of the gene pool because I don't want to take that risk with a woman's life. Even if they chose to have my child with full knowledge of exactly what it meant. I can't do it. I won't do it. Oh, and by the way, I might lack a uterus, but I do happen to have contributed about 50% of that child's DNA. Now, since feminist state, my body, my rules, then that baby inside of you is property. It's nothing more than an extension of you, like a finger. Since it is a property and not a true living human being with its own rights, then I want my half of the DNA back. My DNA, my trademarked exclusive content. 
that baby inside you is making illegal copies of my DNA. That's piracy. Under U.S. anti-piracy law, I should be able to have your unborn child seized and charge you with copyright infringement. After all, it's not a human life. It's a part of your body that can do what you want with and that you are therefore legally responsible for its actions. Because in domestic abuse cases, people ask why didn't she leave rather than why did the man abuse her. And 40% of all domestic violent victims are men. And everyone just expects a man to stay and put up with it. And in 97% of all domestic abuse reports, if either one calls the cops, the man will be arrested by default. Guess how I know. Would you like me to show you the scars on my arms where I was stabbed by a woman and when I fled the building of my crazy ex, I called the cops from down the street. They didn't even take me to the hospital. They just took me straight to jail. I got stabbed in each arm. Each fucking arm. All of them. Every last arm. Because there are parts of the world where women are punished for being sexually assaulted. Yes, again, go there, do something about it. Because approximately 3 million girls are the victim of female genital mutilation. And approximately 48 million men in America are victims of male genital mutilation. Because I want to spread awareness about feminism. And you are. I believe that if a man is abused by a woman or raped by a woman, it's just as sick and devastating as if a woman was abused by a man. How very progressive of you. Do you know that until 2013, the FBI defined rape in such a way it was virtually impossible for an adult male to be raped? By the way, how often does a man get raped? I'm just curious as to how often you think it happens. Your math is so strange, it's like bistro mathematics. It could power a starship. Because domestic violence is a leading cause of injury to women. More than car accidents, muggings, and rapes put together. You are quoting a report from 2000. Your stats on the matter are 16 years out of date, and you understand that? Do you understand that by saying more than all these put together just means that women are really unlikely to suffer injury? Oh, and men will have six times the violence acted upon them than women. Because in 31 states, if a woman has a child as a result of rape, her rapist can sue her for visitation rights. And in 50 states, a 30-year-old woman can rape a 14-year-old boy, get pregnant, then sue the boy for child support and will win. I noticed you left that part off your statement. In 31 states, the man can sue, but that doesn't mean he'll win. But in 50 states, the woman will win about 99% of the time. It's a given. What are the percentage of successful cases on the part of male rapists using women for visitation rights? I love your math. I expect the answer to this one to accidentally create a black hole. Because I'm taxed for having a period. Periods are not a luxury. Look, women take more from the government than they give. Men pay more in taxes than they take. So, if you want us men to pay for your tampons, start paying your fair share of taxes. Because women make up half of the human race. Please explain why this means you need to be a feminist. Because Malala Yousaf is one of the most brave, beautiful, and inspiring people on this planet. Who? Don't know who that is, and at this point, I don't care. Because I believe in the social, political, and economic equality of the sexes. Could've fooled me! Because if a female boss is being assertive, she's being rude. But if a male boss is being assertive, he's doing his job. How about both? How about they are both being rude and both doing their jobs? And citation needed. Because little girls are constantly told they're pretty and cute, and little boys are constantly told they're brave. Are you living in the 1980s? Citation needed. 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 Okay, well, I just wanted to go on record as saying you have ruined the temperature of the air on the bow of the Calatan for me, now and forever. You leave me with no choice but to erase the song from the internet and set Chris Zabrinsky on fire. Stefan Molyneux once said that there are people in this world who are great souls. He stated that we live in an age that lacks great souls, people of integrity who stand up and inspire. I am not a great soul. I remember something I once read that stuck with me. I'll paraphrase it now as a corollary to Stephen Molyneux's theory on great souls. Great souls are forged in fire. It is the privilege of lesser souls to light the flame. That is what I do. I light the flame. I burn your soul. I forge you in fire and see if I can burn away the dross, leaving only a core of hardened steel. 
This is why I took this much time for this response video. This is why I am so harsh. I am so cruel. I work with people who cannot talk, and over the decades I have learned to read body language very well. When you deal with quadriplegics and you wipe their ass, trust me, body language is something you pick up real quick. So I want you to understand it is in my professional opinion that you are a good soul. Feminism is no place for a good soul. You will either have to lie to yourself to remain a good soul or learn new and unspeakable truths. I am not being melodramatic. When you said one woman is raped every six seconds, you statistically accused every man in America of being a rapist. You are spreading fear and lies. No good can come of that. So you either lie to yourself to stay a feminist or you must face the truth. And the truth is horrific. And that horrific truth is feminism is great. I mean it. You have a clear-cut enemy, patriarchy. You can fight it. You have someone to blame. You, you have allies. The world makes sense. There's a logical progression here. The only problem is, is that it's not real. Now, my world, my world is horrible. In my world, there's no one to blame. Things are worse in my world than yours. Everything is muddled and difficult to understand, and everything is incredibly complicated. My world sucks. The only thing going for my world is, is that I live in reality. Emily Rose, I mean this sincerely. Quit. This isn't for you. This will not end well. There are better ways to spend your time. There is no joy down this path. There is no reward, only horrific truths. I actually feel really bad about laying into you like this. The truth is, if I don't smack you in the face with some reality, your delusions are only going to grow and it's only going to hurt more later. You have to make your own choice, but don't say that nobody warned you. It's like a giant airplane barreling towards a mountainside. If you stay the course, the end is clear. But there is a door, and there is a parachute. I suggest you make your choice. And yes, closing your eyes and believing the lies is a choice. I don't have, I don't have the heart to finish this. I'm going to let Radiskull take us home. I am a feminist because... Go gently into that good night. Rage. Rage against the dying of the light. <laughs>